you know, people always ask us, okay, what's next, what's next, what's next? But I think sometimes you just need to take a step back, see what you have, and be happy with what you have. You don't have necessarily to keep rushing, pushing for more, more, more. We are in a period of more, 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 more. But what about, you know, just being satisfied with what you have done? What about, you know, less but better? Uh, my name is uh, Julien Royer. I'm the chef and owner of restaurant Odette here in Singapore inside the National Gallery. So the restaurant is named after my grandmother from my mom's side. She is the person that really showed me how much emotion, love and happiness you can give to people through food, produce and cuisine. I grew up in the countryside of France, in Cantal, in a very quiet and agricultural part of France. I always remember that I'm coming from a very humble background. My family didn't have much money, but we always eat very well back home. Because we have big garden, because we have a small farm, and because we were able to eat the produce from the farm and eat the produce from our garden. He kind of built uh, my test education. I really wanted to become a chef, a cook, or doing something around food from a very young age. I start uh, cooking with my mom, with my family, with my grandma, which were my first mentor kind of thing. And by doing so, you know, I learned a lot of different cooking from uh, cooking some tart on the weekend with my grandma, baking the jam, we do saucisson, we do boudin, we do a lot of charcuterie in-house. All this tradition of this agriculture tradition make me who I am today as a chef. And now uh, I'm in Singapore. It's quite the opposite actually compared to where I'm from. Singapore is a bit the crossroad of Southeast Asia. I like it as well. It's a very interesting place to cook because it's a melting pot. Living here for a few years now, has also made my style of cooking evolve a lot. Now, I think the backbone of the cuisine and the cooking is still French because I learned my basics in France and that's the way I was trained. But we have infused a lot of Asian components in a very wide Asian way, from produce, techniques, taste, sometimes aesthetic. And to be honest, I feel much more comfortable cooking the style of food that we do today than the one we were doing five or 10 years ago. I was supposed to stay for two years and now it's been more than 10 years. Odette has been open uh, since 2015. On les cuit à la vapeur à 75 degrés. Ça c'est la chair du turteau une fois qu'elle est cuite. L'idée de la cuire à cette température là, c'est vraiment de garder euh, toute la sucrosité naturelle de la chair. Une cuillère à soupe d'échalote, si elle est très très fort. Une cuillère à soupe de ciboulette également. Émulsion huile d'olive qui va faire la liaison. Quelques drops de jus de citron vert frais. On va faire des gros, des gros cubes de poire nashi. On va faire une gelée de poire nashi, pomme verte, céleri et je reprends. Ça va apporter beaucoup de fraîcheur. Ça, je garde pour ma garniture. Et tout ça, ça va partir dans ma gelée. On va le passer dans un juiceur. La base de l'assiette, ça va être une purée d'avocat. C'est une purée d'avocat dans laquelle on met un peu de yuzu kosho. Ça va apporter un petit peu côté um, épicé. Ma chair de crabe qui a été assaisonnée. Je la tasse pas trop parce que j'ai envie de garder la légèreté de, de la, la souplesse de la texture. Je vais mettre 5 petits morceaux de poire qui vont apporter hein, le côté euh, croquant, fraîcheur et la surprise du contraste de texture. Voilà. On met une petite quenelle de sorbet. Pareil, ça va faire un élément de surprise à la, dé, à la, dé, à la dégustation. Au milieu ici, encore un élément de texture ici avec ce finger line. On les écrase un petit peu comme ça avec la, avec la main. On les ouvre avec un angle de 45 degrés comme ça et on va venir récupérer un petit peu ce caviar végétal ce qui est génial dans ce produit c'est vraiment la texture et la couleur et là je vais venir rajouter un élément de texture de fraîcheur et d'acidité j'ai ma gelée qui va venir recouvrir un petit peu tout ça je la laisse tomber de façon naturelle dessus Hop. je vais essayer de cacher tout sous la gelée comme ça chaque élément est une surprise à la dégustation je vais mettre 5-6 euh, points d'avocat on les fait griller, on les mixe avec de la coriandre et du yuzu kosho. On va apporter un peu de sécheur. Je vais utiliser feuilles de coriandre et fleurs de coriandre. 
si on en a. Ou des fois on met de la micro-coriandre aussi. Je vais faire un joli mix de coriandre, fleurs et feuilles. On va mettre 4 petites gouttes d'huile de wasabi. Ce qui est marrant c'est qu'elle ne se voit pas, mais que à la dégustation ça va être un... une surprise. Voilà, ça c'est la première recette. So we call it fraîcheur de crabe, which is a crab dish that has a lot of freshness, a lot of texture, and a lot of element of surprise. It looks very simple, but actually it's very layered in terms of flavor. So we rely on a very great quality crab. According to the season, we use Kegani crab from Japan or brown crab from north of France, from Normandy, from Alexandre Navarre. It get us some really, really big crab. We just steam the crab around 75 degrees to, uh, to keep as much moisture as possible. And we serve it with different layers of texture. We use nashi pear, we use finger lime, and we use a sorbet and a jelly made of nashi pear, apple, celery, and ginger. So something very green, very fresh, that we usually serve at the beginning of the meal at Odette to have a like very clean and elegant start of the meal. As I said, I learned a lot from my family, but I, I was lucky to, do, to work in a couple of Michelin star restaurants through my career. And my very first encounter with you know, a really high-hand fine dining restaurant was actually at Michel Brass when I was a, a young stagiaire. For a few months, I was spending the summer in uh, spring and summer in Laguiole. And for me, it was an eye-opening experience to be able to step a foot in this kitchen. Michel Brass was, you know, such an icon and such a big chef, uh, someone that we respect, even though it was a short period of, of time for me. He opened my eyes and he opened my spirit to all the possibilities that this beautiful work, craftsmanship that is cooking is about. And I also learned beyond the cooking and the kitchen side, the philosophy of someone and a family that are truly exceptional people that are really like deep value of humility and integrity. And this is really what I try to, to keep close to my heart always where I go and what I try to apply here in my restaurant. It was a very special experience for me. I was very young and, uh, you know, he opened my eyes. Okay. Donc on a de la betterave rouge, on a de la betterave candy ou shioga, on a de la betterave blanche et on a de la betterave jaune. Chaque betterave, elle fonctionne individuellement, tout simplement en aluminium. Un petit lit de sel, la racine en bas, on les isole bien, on les ferme bien, les tout fait. Chaque couleur séparément, parce qu'elles ne puissent pas pareil, dans les mots au fond comme ça. Ça ressemble à ça. Donc je prends vraiment le cœur de la betterave. On va couper des jolis morceaux. Ça, ça va partir dans ma purée, dans ma glace. Soit en sorbet, soit en crumble, soit en purée. Et après, donc on fait ça avec toutes les couleurs de betterave. Ça donne ça. Il y a des petits ronds. Tout ça, c'est pareil. Après, on fait un jus et on le met dans le sorbet. Ça, ça va me faire des petits pickles qui sont un peu croquants. C'est un plaisir de travailler avec ça. Pickles 1, 2, 3. Sucre, eau et vinaigre de vin blanc. Et on va les laisser là pendant une heure. On va sortir les graines de grenade. On récupère le jus pour faire le sorbet également qu'on met avec. Ça c'est un crumble qu'on fait avec toutes les peaux qui sont séchées avec de la farine et euh, du beurre. Donc les betteraves, on les assaisonne simplement avec une vinaigrette aigre douce qui est faite à base de miel, de vinaigre, de vin rouge, de vinaigre de désherès, pardon, et d'huile d'olive. Ensuite on va les poivrer avec le magnifique moulin. <rire> un petit peu de fleur de sel. Première étape. Je démarre ici, tac. Ensuite, je vais disposer mes betteraves de différentes couleurs. Ensuite, crumble. Je viendrai y disposer ma glace. Ensuite, j'ai du fromage. La là c'est l'intérieur de la burrata, la partie la plus crémeuse. 
Après, on peut le faire avec du fromage frais, on peut le faire avec du fromage de chèvre, on peut le faire avec tout type de fromage. J'en ai un qui est juste nature et j'en ai un autre qui est assaisonné avec un peu de réfort. Ensuite, j'ai des petits pickles d'oignon. Oignon rouge et oignon blanc. Ensuite, j'ai mes pickles, grenade. J'ai mes petites perles d'huile d'olive qui vont apporter un joli côté brillant et aussi une surprise au niveau de la texture. J'ai ma gelée de betterave que je vais venir mettre ici. Mon sirop de betterave, sucre muscovado. Meringue à la betterave. On a fait avec tous les jus. On récupère de toutes les coupes. On va faire le tout avec un petit peu d'amarante. Une pointe de miel. Ça s'appelle les bloopy flowers. Elles sont assez sucrées. Une crème glacée au réfort. French wasabi. <rire> Voilà, c'est la collection de betteraves bio. The second recipe that we saw today was what we call the beetroot collection. A tribute to a, uh, uh, an ingredient that I love and that is too often underrated. Heirloom beetroot, you can do something beautiful out of it and that was the idea of the recipe. We just baked the beetroot on a bed of salt in aluminium foil in order to really concentrate the flavor and to have something really fondant and really yummy. The beetroot we are working for are, are from a small organic farm that we work with for many years now. It has a beautiful, intense sweetness. The idea is to have different textures of beetroot. So we have a beetroot cooked with all the trimming and the skin. We made the crumble, we made the jelly, we made a puree, and we bring a bit of sweetness with the use of honey and a little bit of spiciness because I like the dish to be exciting from the first mouth to the end. We make an ice cream of uh, fresh horseradish. So bring a nice creaminess slash spiciness to the dish. And then there's a lot of technique in the dish, a lot of preparation that needs to be made before. But I think it's a nice melody celebration of uh, this humble ingredient that is beetroot. Yeah. When you are working as a chef, it's very important to have the right tool because you are just more precise and better at what you do and what you cook if you have the right tool. And to be honest, I didn't open the box, as you can see, that until you guys came, because I really wanted to keep the, the surprise and, and to experience by myself. I think that the range of scissors, knife, mandolin is really, like, really, really amazing. The quality of the steel, the quality of the material used, it's simply uh, world class and you can feel that it's durable, you can feel that it's something that's not going to break, and you work very smoothly out with them. The mandolin is particularly impressive for me, because too often we see mandolin that break after a few months, the blade is getting rotten very easily, but the way this one is built, it's so easy to understand, it's so easy to clip, it's so easy to use. I think it's one of, the, one of a kind, to be honest. The scissors also, you know, the, the prise en main the, 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 is so easy uh, to, to start using it and it's very sharp and very solid. So you feel that you are with a lot of confidence when you work with this kind of uh, equipment. The knife, okay, the knife, I cheat a bit because I have one already. <laughs> so the knife, I already know the quality of the knife and the blade. It's truly amazing. The tranchant and the, the blade, the easiness of cutting anything, it's quite spectacular. Definitely, I, I will recommend uh, this range of uh, Kai Michel Brass equipment. It's, it's truly, truly special. Des pigeons de Bretagne, ça vient de Cunéo Menez. Je travaille avec un monsieur qui s'appelle Fabien Boga. La spécificité de ces pigeons, ce sont des pigeons qui sont nourris à la farine de châtaignier. Donc ils ont vraiment un côté très nutty, plus que le côté animal sanguinolent et un peu fort du pigeon. Donc ce qu'on fait dans un premier temps, c'est tirer la tête vers le haut, les cuisses vers le bas, on a bâti les ailes sur les côtés. On va le brûler dans un premier temps, de manière à enlever toutes les, les plumes qui restent. ce qu'on appelle le wishbone, le petit bréchet là. Je vais suivre le petit toit que vous voyez là, en forme de V. Si on ne le fait pas, ça sera un peu plus délicat à découper après. Je tourne, voilà, ça reste tout seul. On met la peau, on va bien le protéger, après on va les faire mariner et ils seront prêts à cuire.
Tac. Ça, pareil, on va en faire un petit pickles. On le cuit euh, face au vide, on le cuit vraiment de façon très classique. Sur le corps, sur l'os. Je trouve que c'est tout le temps, comme ça, c'est le meilleur. Et on le finit avec pain, romarin, laurier et une gousse d'ail rose écrasée. On met dans une petite boîte comme ça. On le fait légèrement fumer avec un peu de romarin sac. Et il va partir à table comme ça dans un premier temps. On va le, on va le présenter aux clients comme ça. Voilà, le pigeon au poivre. On va séparer les poitrines du coffre. Donc là, on suit juste le milieu, tout simplement. De chaque côté de l'os. La petite coupe de poivre qu'on a préparée avant, qui est faite avec euh, trois différents stades de maturité du poivre. Le poivre vert, le poivre noir, le poivre rouge. Après les cuisses, elles ont été préparées séparément. On les fait cuire 4 heures dans de la graisse de canard. Voilà, le qui fond sur le... Black garlic. Ça va nous permettre de délimiter la sauce dans l'assiette. Petite tartelette de pumpkin, pignon de pain et euh, daikon. Pickle de pumpkin. On va le réunir. Comme ça. Ensuite, la cuisse. On met un petit message pour nos clients. Un message qui change en fonction de, de l'humeur. Un barreau qu'on a fait avec les abats, on sert sur le côté. Dedans il y a les abats, les cœurs, les foies. Donc on utilise cette démarcation d'ail pour que le jus reste bien au milieu, pour mettre juste la quantité nécessaire. C'est un jus de pigeon classique avec un peu d'ail noir également. Un petit peu de fleur de sel. Et voilà. So another very classic signature dish from the restaurant, it's a campot peppercorn crusted pigeon. We take three different stages of maturity of the peppercorn, green, red and, and black, to have something peppery, of course, but something with a lot of finesse, a lot of elegance. And the idea is to have a nice contrast, so when you cut a small piece, you have the moist of the meat and you have peppery slash spicy crust that goes against each other and it works quite well. Right now we serve it with black garlic puree, a little tartelette made of kabocha pumpkin, and a pine nuts risotto. And then we do a simple jus, classic pigeon jus, to, that is poured table side. We also do a little tribute to uh, the Chinese bao. It is made of all the liver and heart of the pigeon. Little touch of chopped black truffle inside, because it's the season of black truffle now. And then we encapsulate all this in a bun that we steam. And this is a kind of the second service of the pigeon. So you have the pigeon breast with the pepper crust, the pigeon leg and the pigeon bao. Quite a popular dish here. Now what I want to do is obviously to work with people around me that have the same value and I want also to help them for the next step of their career. I take all these awards and accolades. I think it's a reward of a, of a team, a group of people that working together to achieve what we do. I think if you start to think too much about it, it's the beginning of the end actually. You know, I'm 41 years old and I have so much more to do, so much more to learn and the beauty about this job and what I really feel honestly every day is that more you think you know and more you realize that you know very little actually. We can learn, touch, smell, taste something new every day and then we can refine our palate and, and obviously gain knowledge. Every day we can learn something new and we do learn something new. And I think that's truly the beauty about, about our job. This constant learning exercise, you never get bored of that because the excitement is always here. And I think it's nice to keep, you know, the child that, that you have inside you, the curiosity that you have inside you to guide you throughout your career. So yes, it's only the beginning, I know. <laughs>
Et voilà This is something that we do at the moment, it's the season of citrus. We use citrus from Wakayama Prefecture, or from Kyushu Prefecture. A very wide variety of citrus that are really amazing. For instance, today we have used blood orange, pomelo, oranges, bergamot, to make a, a little tart that is very elegant and very refreshing at the end of the meal. It's a tart made of a phyllo pastry with a creme of yuzu and another one of yogurt to bring the creaminess and the gourmandise. We make a small brunoise of uh, different citrus that we season with a touch of olive oil and black peppercorn. And then just some segments of the fresh citrus that we prepare just before service. And we serve it with an ice cream that is made of Earl Grey tea. So it's an Earl Grey ice cream that again brings a lot of sweetness slash freshness to the, to the tart. And table side we pour a little nage that is made of oranges, mandarin orange, bergamot and extra virgin olive oil. And we finish it with just a few leaves of coriander and a bit of confit orange zest. Something very seasonal, very refreshing with very little sugar. All the dessert that we do here, we tend to reduce as much as we can the amount of sugar to have a light and, and, and very elegant finish at the end of the meal. Oh, that is the first project in Singapore. The second one is Claudine, is the name of my mom. A project that started in 2021 just turned two years old. It's more something casual and, and simple in terms of concept, but with the same focus in terms of cooking and sourcing as the one that we apply here at Odette. We just make a, a cuisine that is à la carte, a cuisine with strong marker of, of French cooking. You will find some really classic dishes such as, as a vol au vent with a sweet bread and morel, a beautiful steak tartare, a salmonière, Crème caramel, floating island, these kind of dishes that I personally enjoy a lot eating. And we also saw that in Singapore we, there is a market between everyday kind of bistro and the fine dining, but nothing much in between for French cuisine. So I really wanted to dig into that and, and, and that's why we opened Claudine in 2021.